Uh, my name is Joe Spenz. I'm the executive director of Space Apps NYC. We're a, we're a nonprofit grassroots organization uh, founded in 2012 to host events such as the Space Apps Challenge, which is coming up uh, this weekend. I'm sure all of you know about it. Uh, if you don't, spaceapps.nyc, learn about it, chat with us afterwards. This is really what this meetup is all about. Um, the Space Apps Challenge is an international uh, hackathon, which is really a problem-solving competition. Uh, it's not just for software engineers. Uh, we get designers, teachers, um, we get f uh, filmmakers, students, writers, uh, anybody who wants to be involved in NASA and problem solving, uh, but doesn't really know how to break into the industry. I'm a software engineer and I still didn't know how to get involved with space until I found the Space Apps Challenge. Uh, and the whole point is to get everybody together, uh, form teams, and work over a weekend collaboratively to solve problems posed by NASA in space exploration. Uh, for the past couple years, uh, it's been run by the Earth Science Mission Directorate by NASA, uh, one of the NASA agencies, uh, which means that it's been an Earth Science theme. Uh, so what that means is we use uh, open data, and I'll get to that in a minute, uh, open satellite data uh, run uh, collected by NASA and NOAA, uh, to solve problems uh, on here on Earth, such as uh, deforestation or famine or transportation, water supply, a lot of different things that um, uh, a lot of different things that we have to tackle as a species. And NASA is really one of the only organizations, or one of the, one of the uh, more popular ones, I would say, uh, that is poised to uh, tackle those challenges because they have such a a large mission, which is really to explore the universe. Uh, so we're all here because we love problem solving. Uh, we all love the scenes from Apollo 13 when everyone gets throws into a room and solves a problem. Otherwise, all the astronauts fly off into space, uh, like that kind of thing. It's not as uh, there's not that much danger in the Space Apps Hackathon, uh, but it's just as fun, I promise. Um, so let me actually show you what some of our past hackers from this past year uh, say about the hackathon. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. All engine running. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. 32 minutes past the hour. Liftoff on Apollo 11. I mean, NASA is attached to it. Who doesn't want to like participate or work with uh, something NASA related? I already like had been to several hackathons and I thought space apps was like the perfect combination of like the cutting edge software development and the APIs out there connecting to, you know, like the next grand frontier, which is space. So it's really exciting. I feel really happy, proud of myself that I decided to come, wake up at 6.30 to get here and hack all day. I feel really proud that I'm doing this and I'm only like 10. We've had the good fortune of getting a diverse range of skill sets on our team as well as age ranges. We have a high school student who's coding our front end and we've got some very experienced software engineers. There's so many diverse groups of people that come here with like their own mindsets. So I feel that's perfect with space because there's so much to discover. Just because you're young doesn't mean that you have less ability than others. Even though you may feel like you have less potential because you're younger, it doesn't mean that you're not capable of the same things. I have a lot of kids in my school that say, oh, I just get in the way because I don't know how to code. But the point of coming to hackathons is learning that you won't be in the way and learning that you can code. I went to space camp when I was a kid. I uh, have been into NASA and space. I saw a shuttle launch when I was a kid. Um, so it was really cool for, for me to be here and, and see the stuff that folks are working on. People can come here with virtually no programming experience or haven't seen any line of code before. And you gotta realize that it's not really about coding as it is about just a really great hub for ideas and entrepreneurship. If you have a great idea, come here and see what you can do. Go get up, hack, it's really fun. So I don't know if you could tell, but that was actually shot here. 
we had our hackathon in this space uh, April of 2017. Last year. Yes. They, they, they do it every spring, but then they change the dates this year, so now my, all my math's off. get it one of these days. Um, so this year we're hosted in the Lower East Side Girls Club. Uh, Dave here from the Girls Club will be up uh, later to give his uh, pitch for the Girls Club and we also have a boot camp coming up, a uh, really cool boot camp using a uh, open source visualization library which you guys will probably be interested in using. Um, last year we hosted here, uh, it was actually the opening for the Space Apps Next Gen Innovation Lab. Um, I don't believe there's any, any representatives here to do their pitch but uh, they're a open open space for uh, innovation. If you want to work on a startup or uh, develop a project, you come here. It's a really nice space to, to work at. Uh, we've been partnering with them for to host multiple events, the Space Apps Challenge. Uh, with Women's Fear and Hannah Payne, we uh, hosted a uh, The Expanse season finale party here. Uh, it's a really great TV show on Amazon. I highly recommend it. Uh, but we host multiple events. We host more than just the Space Apps Challenge. Uh, space Apps NYC is here to bring together the tech and space communities in New York. There is a large tech community, as I'm sure you're all aware, in New York. It's one of the few places where you could just live and not worry about finding a software engineering or an engineering job in general. Uh, not many people, though, know that this is also a space hub. Whenever you think of space, you think of uh, the Space Flight Center, uh, either in Houston or Florida, or Ames out in California, JPL. Uh, there's nothing really going on in New York. Well, actually, there is. There's the NASA Goddard Institute for Space Studies that actually investigate uh, Earth science and uh, develop um, uh, develop tools to help combat climate change. That's up in Columbia. There is a Final Frontier Designs. They're down in Brooklyn, and they develop space suits. Uh, like that's pre I didn't know that last year. That was pretty cool. Uh, Honey Bee Robotics uh, is based in the Brooklyn Naval Yard, and they have actually been building robots uh, that go out into space uh, and are rove around on planets or orbiters around planets, explore comets. They've been doing that for about 20 years now. Uh, there's so many, and Northrop Grumman, obviously in Long Island, uh, built the lunar lander and the Apollo missions. There's so many people here that are interested in space, and there's so many people here can, that we can introduce them to, and that's what we want to do. We want to bring tech enthusiasts who are interested in space together with the space experts. And so you can create new things, work on challenges like space apps. Uh, and so these are a few photos of people at the last space apps challenge. Um, uh, like they said in the, the video, it's really open for anybody. Um, I was a hacker in 2015 before I became an organizer. Uh, when I was on my team, uh, this is at Microsoft, uh, I was the only programmer. Uh, there was a project manager, there were two designers, there was an astrophysicist, and we really relied on him to make a really cool project. Uh, but that just goes to show you that it's not just the programmers. You can have a team of rock star programmers, and they may not make the best project. Uh, if you give enough programmers all the time and resources in the world, they're not going to build anything. Uh, so if you, have, if you have project management skills, uh, if you can rein in people and keep people on track, uh, the demonstrations, the presentations, that's really what's going to get you. Uh, that's really what's going to get you in the end. Um, Thank you, Julie. Uh, so uh, it's really open for everybody, uh, regardless of your uh, skill sets. We will be going into an introduction into the uh, Open NASA data sets. They're just one tool for you to use in the, uh, the challenge. Uh, we also have the Intro to Open Space boot camp happening later this week. And uh, we will be going over some other tools um, at the Friday orientation event, which you all should have gotten an email for. We do have videos up on YouTube for Intro to Google Cloud. Google Cloud is one of our sponsors, and they also have a great platform and set of tools uh, for you to use for uh, web application development, also machine learning and artificial intelligence. Uh, it's a lot of out-of-the-box tools, so you don't have to have extensive background in machine learning or, or AI in order to use these tools to enhance your projects. Uh, and we will have mentors on site and online uh, throughout the weekend uh, to help you if you have any questions or uh, need help getting started or anything like that. Um, so a little bit more background on the Space Apps Challenge. Uh, like I said, it was uh, created in 2012 as a um, uh, from as an 
uh, an innovation project uh, by NASA, the goal of which was, again, to connect citizen scientists or citizens uh, with NASA scientists. Uh, NASA comes up with about 20, ch uh, 20 challenges every year. Uh, those are po all posted on the website. Uh, and they engage with the, open, uh, with the larger community to work on these challenges. Uh, this past year, we had 25,000 people worldwide. Um, we started off, I think, the first year in 2012 with, it was low thousands, I believe. A uh, very small number. We've been growing every year. This year, we're on track to break that number. Uh, 187 cities in 69 countries. Um, I'm in a local Leeds Slack channel, and there are hundreds of people in this channel who are creating uh, events all around the world, Brazil, Tokyo, Ghana, uh, Dublin, uh, there's Silicon Valley, Huntsville, Alabama is going to be this year's main stage. Uh, go online, check them out, they got really cool photos of their events. Um, so this year, it's growing every year, and you get to work with all these people. Uh, there is an online community where you can engage, interact with anybody. All these different locations, including us, will have speakers at their events. Uh, you can ask anybody any questions. You can form teams with anybody. Uh, we highly encourage if you're at a location, you form a team with other people at your location. But if you also work remotely, you can work on really anyone's team. Uh, a friend of mine in 2015 had people all over the United States and I believe Asia on their team. They just remoted in and they took shifts because they're in different time zones uh, working through the night, which worked out for them. Uh, I don't. Re if you're used to that kind of thing, cool. I don't recommend it. It's very difficult managing people across time zones. It's just something you don't want to deal with. Um, so now I want to just show you a couple demos. Um, unfortunately, we couldn't get any last year's teams due to uh, scheduling conflicts to come here and present. But these are two. I believe both of these are the local winners from 2017. So every year uh, we have about 20 challenges and uh, you come up and present for about four minutes. The judges then determine uh, you know, best use of hardware, best, uh, most inspirational hack. There are several criteria which we'll um, uh, share out with you later. But we do choose two projects which represent the local winners for each event. Those local winners then create a four minute video I believe, it's four, I believe it's four minutes. It uh, could be 30 seconds. They change it every year. Uh, then they send it up to NASA. NASA spends a couple weeks looking through thousands and thousands of these videos from all around the world. Um, I believe they're all in English. I'm not sure. There's a lot of different countries, a lot of different languages. Uh, this is Team Proxima. Um, their challenge was, they'll talk about it in the video, but their challenge is to um, build an efficient and predictive um, energy system to monitor for weather events and to understand when you need to load balance uh, energy sources. Uh, and, and this is designed for Mars, but it can be applied to Earth. Uh, Earth. And that's one theme that you shall uh, keep an eye on is these challenges, they're out in space, but all of these solutions can be applied back down to Earth to, to some extent. As our ability to harness the sun's energy matures, our tools must also evolve. And Proxima is the next generation of intelligent power management. Using machine learning, Proxima grows with the mission by anticipating your needs. A leap over current systems, Proxima empowers your crew to make critical decisions before the storm hits. Proxima delivers knowledge when and where it's needed. A powerful dashboard illuminates key information to support confident decision making in demanding situations. In an emergency, Users can respond using the decision support system to keep critical operations running. Proxima is designed for Mars, but has applications here on Earth. From commercial farms to forward operating bases and remote villages, Proxima powers a bright new energy future. All right, so you guys got 48 hours. You can do that, right? Yeah? Um, this video is created, uh, if not a week, weeks after the hackathon. Uh, what they presented was, I think, a bunch of mock-ups for that, and I, th I think even this was mock-ups. Um, we're not expecting you to actually build stuff that works. We're looking for you to build things that can prove that it'll work. 
you know, where the whole point of this challenge is to come up and say, hey, here's a big, you know, a big problem that we want to solve. I have a big idea to solve that problem, but it can't just be a pie in the sky. Hey, let's create a, a car that runs on happy thoughts. Like, okay, that sounds cool, but that's not practical. So we need you to prove your concept somehow. And the way you do that is through a demo. So you have some sort of software, hardware, or something to show, hey, what we're talking about, we can do to some extent. They kind of touched on, uh, we have a UI, we have some machine learning algorithms working in the background. We got enough things here working where it's off the ground, we just need some time and resources to push it over the edge. But we've proved what our idea is. So don't, don't be worried about how polished these things look. Uh, I think they've been working on it ever since then also. These, we, that's also something we encourage. If you are interested in your projects, uh, you like your team members, or don't, but you still want to work on your project, uh, we're here to help you. So uh, we know accelerators and incubators in the city um, may or may not need some VC funding. We know them too. Uh, if there's anything we could do to support you on your efforts to continue a project after the hackathon, we're there to help. Um, so with that, I'm going to show the next one. This is another local window. Hello, we're a Team Waste Not. We are solving the What's for Dinner Challenge. Did you know that in New York City alone, we waste food that can fill 100 subway carts every day? That means $161 billion per year for the U.S. Our application tackles this problem by giving restaurant owners an easy-to-use interface that provides predictions of food consumption in the upcoming week. We integrate restaurants' order patterns with external live data, such as weather and market supply, to train our machine learning model. With our product, the restaurant industry can become more aware of their consumption and drastically decrease food waste for our society. So that project's obviously about managing food waste. Very important when uh, it costs $10,000 to ship one pound of matter up into space. Uh, you don't, you want to recycle everything. You go to Mars or, you know, Luna, any of these things. Obviously still very applicable down here on Earth. Uh, the use case was for restaurants. Uh, so restaurants can manage how much food they order so that they don't waste any. Uh, food waste is a huge problem in New York City. And it's actually very interesting to show how uh, global challenges posed by NASA have very local um, applications to everyone, especially in New York, can relate to many of these issues. Anybody in an urban center can relate to a lot of these human waste or uh, power source issues. Um, so again, it's it's very polished. Uh, when you're working on your uh, your projects, don't worry about getting a whole application deployed and people can start logging in and doing things. Mockups are fine. Come up with a mockup. You can click through it have it in, interact with some APR, get some data, just show, hey, it could do something, and that's fine. All you gotta do is build something for the demo. Once you build something for the demo, and if you win, don't win, whatever, you can work on it afterwards. 48 hours, it's not even 48 hours, it's Sunday, Saturday morning to like Sunday early afternoon sometime. Uh, if you work overnight, you get some extra hours there, but it flies by, so focus on what you wanna deliver and work backwards from there, uh, very critical. So, um, as I mentioned before, the Space Apps NYC, uh, we're a grassroots organization uh, founded to host the Space Apps Challenge, and since then, uh, we've grown, uh, grown out of just hosting the Space Apps Challenge to hosting other events throughout the year. We want to build a community of space hackers, including yourselves, uh, that come to events throughout the year so we can grow the hackathon every year, uh, get it larger, have multiple events, a Space Apps Queens, a Space Apps Brooklyn. Um, and to do that, we work, we partner with organizations in New York. Um, Internet Society, so Jolie from the Internet Society has been uh, live streaming our events since 2012. Uh, I've only been here since 2015. He can tell me stories. Uh, Empire Space Labs is, was founded by a um, was founded by actually a co-founder of Space Apps NYC. It's a space accelerator here in uh, New York. Uh, National Space Society is one of the largest, if not the largest, citizen space uh, organizations. Uh, think think of it like the Planetary Society, but for space in general. Um, and National Space Alliance, uh, the New York Space Alliance, another accelerator. Uh, Women's Fear, Annalise in the back, she's been, uh, Data Knot, she'll be up here in a minute. Um, 
first robotics, New York City, uh, SAP, Silicon Harlem. These are tech and space event uh, organizations in New York that we partner with to host events like these. Um, if you know of any, if you know of any tech events, any organizations who want to be a part of what we're doing here, of promoting STEM uh, throughout New York, and the way we do that is through space, because everyone loves space and NASA, like rockets are awesome. Uh, if you're interested in that kind of thing, come chat with me. Uh, we're always open to uh, hosting more events. We know venues, we know speakers. We could always use venues, we could always use speakers. Uh, we have mailing lists, we could put events together like this one. Yeah, so these are some examples of uh, events that we put on uh, this year and in past. Uh, obviously, we're doing the hackathon this year, uh, several boot camps. If you guys haven't been to these, uh, the intro to Google One, the videos are online. Uh, we had what's not on here, actually it is, the cocktail, the kickoff cocktail party. Um, that video is also on our YouTube channel. I highly recommend you check that out. Um, the intro to open space is a boot camp that is still open. Uh, you, Go to spaceapps.nyc, find the link, register. It's uh, this Wednesday at the Girls Club at 6 p.m. Uh, I mentioned the season finale party, and back in 2014, we actually worked with the Museum of Natural History to launch their hackathon series. If you guys haven't been to the Museum of Natural History hackathons, you guys are gonna love this. Every year, they choose a new department, and they have uh, professors and scientists and people from that department create challenges related to their department, whether it's uh, astrophysics or paleontology or marine biology. Uh, and all the hackers, you get a couple hundred people there, go to the museum and hack overnight in the museum, uh, solving problems for the museum. Uh, and the first one this past year is marine biolog biology, so you can sleep overnight under the big blue whale, which is really cool. First year was Hack the Universe, so Space Apps NYC partnered with the museum to host a Hack the Universe hackathon where we got to hack overnight in the Hayden Planetarium, which was pretty baller. Um, the data set, the Digital Universe, uh, is a data set that has been since been open sourced, and uh, you can learn more about how to use the data set in actual real representation in data of the known universe uh, at the Open Space Bootcamp uh, later this week. Yeah, so here's my plugs. Um, if you enjoy the community, uh, if you enjoy the events that uh, you come, uh, the boot camps, the hackathons, uh, volunteer as an organizer. We are looking for people to volunteer time, anytime you have. Uh, we're all volunteers. We work nights and weekends. Uh, we're not asking you to come in and run a hackathon, but if you have uh, uh, any experience in marketing or know how to like to go on social media and know how to use Instagram and want to like share some space stories or you know a tech organization or someone who wants to get involved, uh, we're looking for anybody who wants to help out in any way. We have a lot of different events, uh, social events, cocktail parties, and uh, tech meetups. Uh, we can always use help, register people in and uh, getting set up and whatnot. It's a lot of fun. Uh, it's, a very, um, it's a very cool way to go beyond the hackathon and really enjoy the community. And that leads into sponsorships. Um, none of you are organizations, you're all people, but uh, if you know organizations uh, who would like to get involved in the Space Apps Challenge uh, or sponsoring Space Apps NYC, uh, we're always looking for sponsorships. Uh, in addition to sponsorships, we recently launched a Patreon page. So Patreon is a online platform where uh, content creators like musicians and artists can uh, basically get funded by their supporters, by their fans, uh, so that they can go on creating content without having to worry about a personal financial burden. None of us make money, we're all volunteers. Sometimes it costs us financially to put on these events. So we always ask for uh, any community donations, a dollar a month, five dollars a month, uh, all goes towards uh, getting food, getting t-shirts, getting uh, cool stuff together, stickers for events like these. Uh, it'd be a really big help, patreon.com, or come talk to us about sponsoring the hackathon. There's a lot of really cool perks to get to sponsoring, but again, you should probably be an organization because they're just way too much for any one person to spend money on. Um, okay, so that's weird. Okay, uh, so <laughs> that was last year. Um, if you have a venue, uh, we also uh, are looking for venues to host uh, small events from you know 50 person meetups up to like 200 person hackathons. Um, if you know of any, just give us a holler. 
And that's, that's it. So that's my intro to space apps. Uh, we covered a lot of the high points. Um, the details of the day-to-day -day hackathon are on the website if you want to learn, like, okay, when do I show up uh, and all that stuff. But it's pretty straightforward for anyone who's been to a hackathon. If you haven't been to a hackathon, uh, you can expect to show up uh, the Friday night before. Uh, we're going to have an orientation event where we walk you through the, the specific challenges uh, for this year. And that's also where we do team formation. Uh, and then the rest of the weekend is pretty straightforward. It's you come in on Saturday and you hack. You just find a space, find a corner, find a chair, find a couch or something, and you're just there with your team. You can roam around, do whatever. Uh, we provide all meals, so breakfast, lunch, dinner for Saturday, uh, dinner on Friday, and breakfast and lunch on Sunday. Uh, we got uh, presentations start around 2 p.m., I believe. So you have the morning to wrap things up, get your presentation ready, talk with your team and then submit it and have lunch and not have to worry about anything uh, until the demo starts. So you can expect to be there starting 8 o'clock on Saturday. It's about 5 p.m. on Sunday. Uh, it's open overnight, so you can stay overnight, but you got to bring, if you want to like a sleeping bag or anything, you got to bring all that. Um, otherwise, you can come back uh, for breakfast at 8 a.m. Uh, again, if there's any other questions, there's a big FAQ page on the website. Um, Again, my name is Joe. Here's uh, contact info. I'm going to be hanging around the space uh, afterwards. Um, and I'm running out of things to say. I believe that's it. Again, if you have any questions, come chat with me. But if anybody has any questions, which I'm sure you will, uh, about open NASA APIs, data sets, uh, any uh, technical limitations you may have for in the hackathon, uh, we re request all open source technologies just for the spirit of the Space Apps Challenge. Uh, we'd like everything open source and free and public for everybody. Uh, if anybody has any questions around that or uh, how to get started, um, again, I'll be around. You can shoot me an email, uh, put up my contact information again later. Um, but bef actually, before we hand it over, does anybody have any initial questions uh, that maybe I can answer right now? Uh, sorry about that. Do we have uh, another mic? Jolie, do we have another mic? Oh, okay. We're just uh, shout out the question. Yeah, I was just wondering, uh, do you guys have a limit on the two sides? Uh, so the question's limit on the team size. Uh, we don't have a strict limit. Um, I'll just tell you my past experience. Uh, what we don't want are the extremes, and I consider extremes to be like under three and more than five to eight. Uh, in there's a sweet spot. If we get a lot of teams that are under one person, or <laughs> under one person, <laughs> under three people, um, I guess remote people are like half a person, right? Um, if you get under three people, so like one or two people on a team, if we get enough of them, then demos take forever. Because we had to go through all the 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 lower the number of people on a team, the more teams we have. Each team gets uh, three, four minutes. Again, I have to go check the the, um, the requirements this year. Uh, it just means it takes longer, and demos already are going to be a couple hours. Uh, so we try to encourage people, you know, have a few people on your team. If you get more than like eight or so, um, then teams start getting unmanageable unless you all know each other, like you've worked together and you have team, dynam team dynamics already formed, uh, you guys are just going to start spiraling and arguing and uh, you don't want eight people going in eight different directions at 4 a.m. Uh, it just, it gets crazy. Uh, a lot of cat herding. So, uh, it's 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 a soft recommendation, you know. Do whatever uh, you'd like. If you work, have another team that you guys work on the same project, team up or work on similar projects. This is a with everything else in the space industry, it's cooperation. I'm not sure if you've heard of that before, but SpaceX and Blue Origin, everybody's like, yeah, you know, we're in competition, but we all want to go to space, so let's help each other out. That's the that's the philosophy that we also have here at the Hackathon. Is uh, you know everyone's in is competing with each other, but everybody helps each other out. If you have a question on Python and some other guy can help you out, you go and say, hey, how you doing? I'm working on this thing. You got a minute? And everyone's very sociable like that. So uh, I wouldn't worry too much about team size, but do whatever you think is best. Any other questions? Yes. So if you have less than three, do you have a format where you? Sure. So team formation. Uh, we have, uh, if you, you guys, uh, if you've registered for the Space Apps Challenge uh, for the hackathon, uh, you should have gotten an invite to Slack. Slack is a team-based communication tool that a lot of organizations use. Um, through there, we have a channel called Team Meetup. 
And basically, you can go there, you introduce yourself. Hey, I'm Joe. I'm a software engineer. I have experience in Ruby and Python, JavaScript, yada, yada, yada. Um, and you say, I'm looking for a team, or I want to work on this challenge or something. And that's a way for you to connect with other people to say, oh, we need a designer, and you're a designer. Let's chat about this. Uh, we also, on our Friday night orientation event, so that's going to be at the Girls Club at 6 p.m., uh, it's mandatory. If you can't make it, talk with us. We'll get you in. Um, the point of that event is to do all the prep work ahead of time so people can start hacking Saturday morning. So check people in, introduce you to the challenges and everything. At the end of that event uh, will be an opportunity for everyone to congregate around speakers and ask questions and form teams. Um, if you, By the time Saturday comes around, you still don't have a team, just uh, you know, ping people in Slack. Be like, hey, I'm this skill set. I'm looking for a team. I was interested in these challenges. Each challenge has its own Slack channel. So if you're interested in a particular challenge, you drop in there and say, hey, what teams are working on this? Do you guys need any help? Uh, if you have like two or three, four people on a team, you can always add room for more. Uh, it's also only like a 36-hour event, so you know you're not going to be working on a project with these people for you know forever. So be sociable. Introduce yourself. Let other people in, especially if you're coming with a preformed team. Let other people on the team, and you know, just be welcoming like that. 